Hi, Hi Kitty Wink listeners. listeners. I'm Lindsay. And I'm Juliana. Glad you're all here for story time. Okay, open hearted, playful, and intelligent listeners. This is episode number 17. This story highlights the number 17 and the letter Q. Yeah, cool Q. Thanks for listening and being part of the Kitty Wink crew with us and our octopus pal, Ozzy. Are you looking for ways to support your favorite podcast? Check out our Shopify store. The link is in the show notes, or you can find it at kittywinkcrew.myshopify.com. Are we ready to guess the animal in the story? Let's go. Okay, here are your three clues. Okay, I'm ready. Number one, this animal is a bird, part Mm. of the pheasant family. Okay. Number two, they can fly 30 to 40 miles per hour. That seems really fast. Yep, faster than I can go. Number three. The bird's name rhymes with snail. Ooh. I you love rhyming. I love rhyming. Snail. Oh. Okay. Hmm. Listeners, what do you think it is? Hmm. Is it a quail? <laughs> Great guess. It's a quail. Yay. I loved that you had the rhymes with clue. That really helped me. <laughs> Let's see if we can find where the number 17 is. And the letter Q shows up. And as always, stick around for our call, A Kitty Wink portion at the end. I'm excited to learn more. Enjoy A Kitty Wink story from us. It's time to listen, and then we'll discuss. Yahoo! Let's go! There once was a rather adorable Texan quail named Quinn. That's Quinn with two N's, she would always say. Now, Quails are a type of bird, and when quails lay eggs, they can lay between 10 to 20 at a time. Oh, whoa. I know. Quinn was one of 17, and like most quails in Quinn's large family, her feathers were speckled brown, white, and blue-gray. Isn't that pretty? It's really pretty, yeah. But unlike her siblings, there was something super-duper special about Quinn. She was born with the most beautiful golden feathers in her tail. Sometimes her brothers and sisters would make fun of her for her quirky-looking tail, but she enjoyed it all the same. Quinn, with two ends, loved how it sparkled in the sun and how this quirk made her unique. Quirky is my favorite Q word. Aww. Quirky means having traits that are unexpected or different, and Quinn's tail fits that description well. Yeah, quirky is a great word to describe Quinn and her fabulous tail. As much as she loved her tail, she also loved something else as well. Baseball. Do you like baseball, Lindsay? I do. I love baseball. Go Cubs. (laughs) (laughs) Luckily, there was a lot of baseball played in Texas, too. There were professional teams that played in giant stadiums and minor league teams that would still draw a rather large crowds. But Quinn preferred flying to the neighborhood baseball diamonds to watch the little league teams compete. For Quinn, kids were much more entertaining and seemed to have lots of fun when they played as well. Would Quinn cheer for both teams or did she pick a favorite team? Well, at first, Quinn did not have a favorite team. But then she saw a group of little leaguers that wore gold uniforms. Ooh. Yeah. And that reminded her of her fabulous golden tail feathers. Of course it did. <laughs> Quickly, she became the biggest fan of this team. And she never missed a game. And she'd even come to all their practices. We'll talk about a loyal fan. <laughs> that is commitment. How many days did the team play? And what was their team name? Good questions. The team practiced three days a week. Mondays. Wednesdays, and Fridays. Their games were always played on Saturdays, and their team name was The Quests. Ooh, cool. In fact, they had a team cheer, and they sang it before every game that went, we're on a quest to be the best. We'll have fun and score those runs. Go Quests! Oh, that's a great cheer. (laughs) There's so many things that can bring a team together, and having your own team cheer is an awesome reminder that everyone on your team is working toward the same goal. That's so true. And Quinn loved the cheer as well. During the Quest games, Quinn would pump up the team by flying around the baseball diamond, squawking out the chair again (laughs) and again. Oh my gosh, amazing. The team always laughed and sang along. 
They loved Quinn's quirky ways and loyal support. During one very sunny game day, the Quests were heading into the sixth inning, down 7-10. to 10. Wanting to help lift the team's spirit, Quinn flew around the bases as low as she could get and squawked the Quest chair as loudly and as proudly as she could. This time, the team's coach, that's Coach Q, spoke up. Okay, okay, little leaguers. There's room for both focus and fun. Let's get our heads in the game and pay attention. We've got a lot of baseball to play and a game to win. Oh, and little quail, please stop flying so close. Your tail is too distracting and we don't want a ball to accidentally hit you. Quinn definitely did not want a ball to hit her. And she didn't want to be the reason the team couldn't concentrate either. She just loved cheering the quests on and knew they all delighted in her positivity and support. Quinn wanted to keep flying around, but listened to the coach and flew off to the side. As the sixth inning drew to an end, the opposing team called a time out. That gave Quinn some time to think more about what Coach Q said. Why would her tail be cause for distraction? Was it too long? Or maybe too beautiful to handle? Did Coach Q dislike her quirky gold feathers? Oh, I know. Timeout was over and the seventh inning began. Quinn's favorite player on the quest was a pitcher named Maeve. She wore number 17 on her uniform, and when she was on the pitching mound, strikeouts were bound to happen. Strikeouts in baseball are when the batter, or the person hitting the ball, accumulates three strikes. That means they either miss the ball when they swing, do not swing a ball that comes through a specific zone, or they hit a ball that goes off to the side called a foul. Yes. Thanks for explaining that, Lindsay. Something else to know is that the referee in baseball is called an umpire, and they make the calls. The home plate umpire stands behind the batter and catcher for a clear view. When Maeve was pitching, Quinn liked to fly close to the umpire for a better than front row seat. This time, she replayed Coach Q's words in her head. Little Quail, please stop flying so close. Your tail is too distracting and we don't want a ball to accidentally hit you. These words gave her pause. But if she stayed up a bit higher in the air and didn't come too close, she thought she would be out of the way enough and could still help to cheer Maeve and the quests on. So off Quinn went, flying above the players and fans, squawking out the quest cheer and enjoying the feeling of the midday breeze and the warm sunshine on her feathers. Maeve smiled at Quinn, but when she went to throw the ball... Something seemed to bother her eyes, and she ended up throwing a perfectly hittable ball to the batter, who slammed it past third base, giving her a chance to run safely to second base without getting tagged out. Oh, bummer. Oh, don't worry. Maeve didn't let this get her down. As she started pitching to the next girl at bat, Quim flew around her cheering. But notice every time she passed the pitcher's mound, Maeve would squint like something was making it hard for her to see. Do you know what it could be? I have a feeling. (laughs) Just then, Quinn heard Coach Q's voice. Please stop, little quail. Your feathers are too distracting. Oh, no. Was she the reason number 17's game was off? Oh, no. How could this be? Looking up at the sun, Quinn noticed how the warm sunlight shimmered and reflected off her golden feathers. Ugh. So her tail was reflecting light from the sun into Maeve's eyes, causing her difficulty seeing where she was throwing. When light reflects off a surface, it bounces off and goes somewhere else. Yep. The light was bouncing off of Quinn's fabulous feathers right into Maeve's eyes. No. I'm not helping number 17 like I thought I was, thought Quinn. And she quickly flew off to the side where the other fans sat in the bleachers. Immediately. Maeve's pitching was back, and she struck out three batters in a row. Quinn felt so bad that she was the problem for the team and went over to their bench to apologize. The team forgave her immediately and told her they counted on her support. Coach Q said, Sometimes what we try to do doesn't have the exact effect we're hoping for, and that's okay. When you do something with an open heart, it's never wrong. 
We need you to cheer us on, but not from the air. So why don't you sit on the bench with us, out of the way of flying balls and reflective light? Quinn could not believe it. A seat on the bench with her favorite team? Oh my gosh. (laughs) This was a dream come true. No kidding. What a good coach. Seriously. The Quest ended up winning the game and for the first time ever, went on to win the championship game. 17 to 8. Oh, wow. They really won. Uh Uh-huh. They kicked butt. (laughs) (laughs) The Quest decided to make Quinn their official mascot and even changed their name to the Quailers. Oh, I love it. Quinn was officially part of the team and learned mistakes are part of life. It's what you learn from them that matters. And that's the end. Let's call a Kitty Wink. Hi, Kitty Wink. Can you introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Maeve and I'm 10 years old. Hi, Maeve. Thanks for sharing and being part of the crew. Yes, Maeve. 10 years old. That's a big number. What's your favorite thing about being 10? I like um, that it's double digits. I also like that it's double digits and 10 to my favorite thing about 10. I think I've already said this before, but is it how many fingers do you have? 10. Yes. And so when you do anything with 10, you can always use your fingers to help you. Yeah. And how many toes do you have? 10. (laughs) I just wanted to throw that in there. Oh, we're so glad you came on this week's journey with us. Can you tell us your favorite part of the story? I really liked it when um, Quinn, the became the mascot for the team. Oh, I like that part too. Yeah. Can you picture like what she looks like? I think she looks really happy and she has a smile. Yeah, I agree. And does she have something like kind of sparkly about her? Her tail. Do you remember what color her tail was? Golden. Golden. I love gold. Me too. So pretty. But the, the sun was kind of reflecting on it, right? Yeah. Um, did you notice the number 17 anywhere? Yes, because the pitcher's number was 17, and when they won the championship game, they won it with 17 points. Woo! That's a lot of points. That would be a lot of points, right, to get in baseball. And then did you notice the letter Q? Mm-hmm. The, quail, the word quail starts with the letter Q and so does the word Quinn. Mm-hmm. And the coach's name was Coach Q. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. That's a lot of Q. And then do you know what letter often comes after Q in a word? U. You are right. Wow. Good job. Yeah. Good noticing. Coach Q doesn't have a U after it. But Quinn and Quail both do, right? Mm Mm-hmm. And what do you think that they learned? What do you think Quinn learned? I think she learned that like not to get like too excited over things yeah. but um to like think about what she was doing and what it could cause before she actually did it yeah cuz sometimes you do something and you're not you're thinking it's great but it might bother other people you don't yeah. know paying attention to your surroundings mm-hmm. yeah that's a really good lesson sometimes you do that even with my friends because sometimes when I'm editing these podcasts, I'm humming and Lindsay's like, hello, I'm trying to work over here. <laughs> I can't hear a lot of noises at one time. It doesn't work for me. Maeve, did you learn anything about quails? I learned that they have like gray and gray blue feathers. Right. They're pretty. I don't think yeah. I've seen a quail in real life. Have you? I don't know if I have, but I have like Quinn stuck in my head with her beautiful gold feathers, so... I don't know. Now I'm going to have to start looking for quails. Yeah, I think so. And before wrapping up, are you ready to play a Would You Rather, Maeve? Yes. Okay. Would you rather be a baseball player or a soccer player? I would probably uh, be a soccer player because in a baseball play, and if you're a baseball player, um, you're not like always playing at Mm. like... um, you're not always playing, but in soccer, you're usually on the field. In baseball, everyone has to take turns, like um, being up but to bat. Right. 
That's a good point. And like waiting to be up to bat, you might mm-hmm. have to wait kind of a long time. Yeah. Do you play soccer? No. No. Yeah. But you have played before. Uh huh. Yeah. That's a fun sport. I think I would say soccer too because I love to run and you really get to move in soccer, don't yeah. you? Yeah. What about you, Lindsay? I think I would say baseball. I don't think I want to run all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think I want to wait and watch other people. All right, Maeve, do you have a would you rather question for us? Hmm. How about would you rather go to a place that's really cold or really hot? Oh, really hot. Oh, this one's a hard one for me. Um, Just because you're really hot right now. <laughs> well, because I love, I love like warm, cozy, hot cocoa, watching the snow outside and dressing nice and toasty and sledding. Probably hot, though, because it would be fun to go in the sunshine and run around. You get to do more things when it's hot out. Yeah. Yeah, I would say hot with a swimming pool. What about you, Maeve? I think I'd say cold because I feel like when you're cold, you can get on a coat or jacket or something to make you not cold. But when you're hot, like, there's not. Ooh, fair point. Like, see, I understand exactly what you're saying. Yes. Yeah, she might have she might have swayed us. Thanks, Maeve, and listeners, for tuning in to episode number 17. And we cannot wait for you to be with us again on another episode. Bye, Maeve. Bye, Maeve. Bye. That was so fun to be with all of you and have a conversation with our Kitty Wink guest, Maeve. If you would like to be a Kitty Wink guest, please reach out. We would love to have you. Yes. Email us at contactkittywink at gmail.com and check out our Instagram page at Kitty Wink Crew. We would love to have your artwork too. Can you draw a baseball diamond with a quail flying by? Please send it our way and we might just feature your artwork on our page. Thanks for letting us share what we love, stories. Please come back next week for a new podcast story adventure. We want to grow our community, so please show us some love by liking, subscribing, reviewing, and checking out our Shopify store. Thanks for doing that, and remember to love yourself, others, and spread that love everywhere. Or as Ozzy would say, lead with your three hearts. Goodbye. Bye. Stories written and read by Juliana Bria and Lindsay Farley. Original theme by Miriam Mayer. Artwork by Amy Nicholson and Maggie Porter. Find us wherever you get your podcasts. This has been a Kitty Wing Crew production.